Hi, today we'll be learning OSPF. OSPF itself is a protocol and that's the example of link state routing protocol you can see here and it came under interior gateway protocol IGP and it's a type of dynamic routing. So overall you can say OSPF is a type of dynamic routing. OSPF is an example of dynamic routing. And in OSPF, the routers exchange topology information with their nearest neighbor for the communication. So why is OSPF used? So we all know that routers connect network using the IP, IP address. And OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, is a router protocol used to find the best path for packets as they as they pass through a set of connected networks. So next we have is a what metrics are used in OSPF to select the best path. OSPF uses a cost matrix that represents the status of the link and the bandwidth of the interface in an algorithm to determine the best route to a destination. So OSPF uses cost matrix and then cost matrix represents the status of link and the bandwidth of the interface. The route with the lowest value for cost is chosen as the best path. An OSPF algorithm, uh, OSPF protocol used to algorithm, which are SPF, certain path first, or Dijkstra algorithm. Next, we have is a OSPF router function, and here we have internal router in internal router all router which have its interface in a single area is known as um, internal router for example this is area 0 and then we have a router different router in area area 0 then these all router are known as the internal router next we have is a backbone router so area 0 is known as the backbone area this is area 1 area this is area 0 and then all the router in area 0 is known as the backbone routers these are the routers backbone routers and next we have is a area boundary router area boundary router is the router that helps to connect backbone area with another area let's create another backbone area and create some backbone routers and name it as a area 1 so this is area 1 and this is area 0 so area boundary router is the router that helps to connect one background area to the another area so this router is the area boundary router and rest of the router are connected with the each other inside the boundary area and next we have is a autonomous system boundary router asbr is a router that is running multiple protocol and services as a gateway to routers outside the ospf domain and those operating with different protocol like um, eigrp reap and other protocols Let's explain it in another picture, another slide. So here you can see this is area 0 and this is area 1. And this is the particular router that is connecting area 0 to area 1. That's why this router is known as the ABR. And this router is also helps to connecting IGRP protocol with the OSPF protocol in the area 1. So that's why this router is known as the ASBR, Autonomous System Border Router. Next, let's go to next slide now. After this theory, we will be doing lab OSPF configuration. In our lab OSPF configuration, we will be doing basic OSPF configuration. After that, we will do OSPF in multiple area configuration. 
and we'll do OSPF plain text authentication and after that we will also do OSPF MDF authentication. So let's go and start our lab. Here I am in my Cisco packet tracer. Now let me grab some router switch and then PC. I'll grab 2621 series router. Now after this, let me add serial port on each router devices. Let me go to router 0 and then turn it off and then add serial port to the router devices. Turn it back on, close it, router 1, off, add serial port, turn it on and then close. Once you finish adding port, you can join the routers now with the cable. I'm gonna use serial DC cable. Serial 0 slash 0 to serial 0 slash 0. Serial 0 slash 1 to serial 0 slash 1. Serial 0 slash 1 to serial 0 slash 1. I'm gonna grab straight through cable. and connect fast ethernet to fast ethernet fast ethernet 0 slash 2 to fast ethernet 0 0 slash 0 to 0 slash 1 and then fast ethernet 0 slash 2 to fast ethernet 0 here you can see these are the network I'm going to assign here and you can see 192.168.10. network and 192.168.15. network and 192.168.20. network. Now let's go to each router and assign IP to each interface. Let me go to router 0 and then CLI command. Here you can write simply no because we are not going to enter any initial configuration dialog. And then enable and then config mode. And then you can go to interface SE0 zero slash 0 and then assign the IP address which is 192.166.10.1 and public marks to 5525525520. So you have to assign clock rate as well, which is 64,000, and then you can simply type no set. No. And then let me exit from here and then enter to the another interface yes is 0 slash 1 and assign IP address which is 192.168.25.1 and then subnet marks to 5525525.0 and then we have to assign clock rate as well. And clock rate is 64000 and just write no shutdown to turn on the port. Okay, this port is up now and let's go to another interface which is fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and assign IP 192.168. This is a 30 dot network so 30.1. And then subnet marks will be to 55.255.255.0. So I haven't tried IP address. 22.168.30.0 to 30.1. And then to 55.255.255.0. And no shutdown. Okay, this is how you turn on the port. Okay, now let's go to router 1, CLI command, and then just simply write no, enable, config, and let's go to interfaces, e0 slash 0, and let's assign IP address, IP address is 192.168.10.network, uh, so 
okay in the two and then two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero and then here we don't need to assign any clock rate or that's why just write shut down to turn and be port no shut down okay and let me exit from this interface and then enter to the another interface which is yes a0 slash one let me enter to the another interface is a0 slash one and then you need to assign the IP so you need to check which uh, what's the network we are going to use here we are going to use 15 dot network so we write IP address 192.168.15.1 because we are going to use the 50 dot network so I uh, now subnet max will be 255.255.255.0 and then here you need to assign the clock rate because this is the DC side you can see here so clock rate is 64,064 yeah. and then write no shut down so this is how you can see it's green now the port is up now we can close router 1 and let's go to router two and do the same configuration and then after you finish that configuration you can go to router three okay let me go to cli mode and then type no and then enable config mode and you can see this is the interface sc0 slash zero so i'm going to enter to sc0 slash zero and apply ip address IP address is 20. Dot network here 192.168.20.2. I'm not going to use one IP address because for one I already use for router two. So now subnet max is 255.255.255.0. So this is how you assign IP and then you can see yes zero slash zero is the DC side of the cable. So you need to assign the uh, clock rate here. So let's go and assign clock rate 64,000 and then simply write no shut down. Okay, so you can see it's green now. Now let's exit from here and then enter to uh, exit from here and then enter to another interface which is yes e0 slash 1. You can see it here, it's yes e0 slash 1. So let me go to sc0 slash 1 and IP address, assign IP address 192.168. I think it's 25.network, 25.2.255.255.255.0. So this is the IP we assign and we don't need to assign any clock rate. So I'm going to do a no shut down to turn on the port. You can see it's green now. So let me close this off. So if you take your cursor over the router, you can see assign IP and the port links are off. You can see it's up and IP has been assigned. Now let's go to router 0 and do configure our OSPF protocol. So let me go to configuration mode first. And then you can write router OSPF and keep the uh, ID number, process ID number. I'm going to give 1. And then after that you need to assign the network. And you need to include all the network that is connected to the router 0 and you can see here uh, router 0 is connected to the 3 network 192.168.10.network 25 network and then 30.192.168.10.0 uh, and then wildcard marks is 0.0.0.255 and then area is 0 I'm going to set area 0. So in this way, I'm going to add another network which is 192.168.25.0 and then wildcard marks is 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255 and then area 0. And next network we have 
Uh, next network we have is a 192.168.30.0 and then while can mark 0.0.0.0.0 Two five five, and then area is zero. So this is how you add the network. And then wildcard marks for class C network is zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five. And let's go to our PowerPoint slide and see what's the area zero and what's the OSPF one. You can see we have broad has router OSPF one. OSPF1, the number 1, is actually a process ID and you can choose any number you like, like OSPF10, OSPF60. It doesn't matter if you want to use any other different number. So another, uh, we have another command we have is has Netro and your um, Netro ID and then uh, you use your wildcard marks and then area 0. So what's the area 0? Area 0 is zero is actually just the number. You can use either area 1, area 2 or area 3 just to identify the area. But the reason for using OSPF area is to provide the scalability. And this area helps to reduce OSPF overhead traffic sent on the network. And it also reduces the size of the topology database that each router must maintain. Now let's go to another slide. You can see wildcard marks. Wildcard marks is actually a marks of bits that indicate which part of an IP address are available for the examination. And wildcard marks are used to indicate the size of the network or subnet for some routing protocols such as OSPF. And you can see here subnet marks of class A is 255.0.0.0 and wildcard marks for the class A will be just opposite 0.255.255.255 and class B network subnet marks is 255.255.0.0 while the wildcard marks of class B will be 0.0.255.255. And in this way, class C wildcard marks will be 0 .0 0 0.0.0.255. Now let's go to router 1 and configure the OSPF. Enable, config, and then router OSPF 1, and then network. You can see it is connected with the two network 10 dot network and 15 dot network so i'm going to use both the network 19 192.168.10.0 dot zero network and then wildcard marks is 0 dot zero dot zero dot two five five and then area we're going to use is zero and another uh another network will be 15. So this is how you add the network. Now let's go to another router. So I'm here in my router 2 and then let's add the network here. Enable, config and then uh, OSPF router, router OSPF one and then we have to add the network network you can see 15 dot network 20 dot network and the 35 dot network so let me add the network here 192.168.15 dot dot network 0 0 dot 0 dot 0 0 dot 255 and then area 0 and let's add the another network which is 35 dot network and then area 0 and let me add similarly another network which is 20 dot network so, 
these three networks are connected with the router too. So in this way you can add the network and then let's close this one and go to router 3 and do the same configuration. So once you finish configuration in all router you can go to PC0 and assign the IP. Desktop, IP address and assign the IP 192.168.30.network so 30.10 192.168.30.1 and then let's go to PC1 and then similarly assign IP to this PC as well 192.168. Let me check the network here is 35 so 35 that you can assign any IP 10 or 12 and then you can give the default gateway 192.168.35.1 so default gateway is the IP that you assign to the interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 so let me close this one and then after that we can click fast forward more and then start sending packet from PC0 to PC1 or PC1 to PC0 It will take a time. So you can see it's successful now. Or you can track the packets by simply click on, clicking in simulation and then click on play button. In this way you can track the packets. So thanks for watching. So in OSPF, the packet choose the best path based on the cost. So you need to know how to calculate the cost. Lowest cost is considered as the best path. So in next video, we'll be doing OSPF configuration in multiple areas. So thanks again.